officially a mom it has been three weeks since i had baby mason who is so so precious um so i finally got enough energy to record this the labor and delivery story time slash vlog video um it's exactly three weeks today's wednesday april 12th hopefully i'll have this video right after within a day that i've recorded but yeah so um baby mason is here he has arrived and he is like the cutest ever so i'm gonna give you guys my labor and delivery experience along with some clips that i have from the hospital that i was i was really trying to vlog you guys but when i explain how this all happened <laughs> you'll probably see why like i wasn't even thinking about the camera okay okay so if y'all don't know um follow me on instagram um i had mason on march 22nd 2023 and y'all that's also my birthday <laughs> so crazy right so mason's due date uh, was march 19th and in the beginning when i found out his due date I remember being at the doctor and I was like, oh my gosh, what if he like actually comes on my birthday? And lo is it lo and behold? Yeah. And lo and behold, Mason came on my birthday, y'all. On my birthday. <laughs> so now I'm sharing a birthday with a precious boy who I love so much. And he is the greatest gift I could ever get. It's amazing. So let's get into it. And also y'all excuse the hair because it's been like this for weeks now okay okay so let's begin with march 20th so march 20th was a monday and actually my last day of work was march 17th which was a friday so my maternity leave started on that monday um i was 40 weeks in one day on monday march 20th and i went to the doctor well first I went to go to the gym <laughs> so i woke up at 5 a.m or 4 30 a.m to go to a workout class at 6 a.m on march 20th which is past my due date right went to the workout class everything was fine had a great workout told the people there i was like yeah this is probably my last time working out until you know they clear me after i have mason um and ignore this right here i burned my arm when i went to get japanese barbecue on the fried rice bowl but yeah anyway so um yeah so i went to my workout class everything was fine and then i had an appointment with my doctor um at like 9 30 that day in the morning so i went to the doctor and she said i was one centimeter dilated so the week before i was not dilated at all i had an appointment march 16th was zero centimeters dilated went in on March 20th and I was one centimeter dilated. And I knew that if I came in to the doctor on Monday and I was somewhat dilated, I wanted her to do a membrane sweep. And a membrane sweep is like when they, she takes her finger and puts it up there and goes in a circular motion um, to help like induce labor. And this is like a natural way to induce labor. I um, did not want to have like a medical induction because I just didn't hear good things about those I feel like they're I heard they were like painful and all this stuff so I just wanted it to be induced naturally so I was happy to get that it did feel very uncomfortable but it was bearable of course so I got a membrane sweep at like 9 45 10 o'clock Monday went to Target after ran errands um, sometimes a membrane sweep works and sometimes it doesn't so after she did it and I was running my errands, I did notice that I had some cramping. Um, it felt like really heavy period cramps. So I had that going on, but I could still like go out and function, right? So get home, still crampy going on, went to bed, still cramping, just getting a little bit stronger. Um, so then I think, was it then I, 
um, I have the contraction timer app. So yeah, that night, um, I didn't even do it like consistently that night. I didn't start doing it consistently until like the next day. Okay, so I started um, feeling more cramps like throughout the night. So Monday night, I started feeling like more cramps, um, but I was able to like sleep and stuff, but it was just kind of like hard for me to get comfortable. And then the morning time, I was doing laundry, I was fine, and then 11 o'clock came, okay? 11 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday, March 21st came, and I was like, I'm starting to feel these more often, and they're starting to get a little bit more painful, so let me time them. So I started timing them um, then, and they were probably like 10 minutes apart, something like that, 10, 15 minutes apart. Yeah. So like they were like 10, 15 minutes apart and I was like, these must be the contractions because I didn't feel like this. I never felt this before. And um, I know like you get Braxton Hicks throughout pregnancy, but what I thought, I thought I had Braxton Hicks before and it wasn't a Braxton Hicks. It was just Mason in my belly in a weird position, like on a rib or, you know, like something like that, pushing against something that made it uncomfortable. So I don't even think I really got Braxton Hicks if they're supposed to be like mild contractions or something. Anywho, so I started timing them. My dad was over here. Um, Ralph was working downstairs. And so my dad and I were up here in this room. And I was like, let's build this shelf, this bookshelf right here. Since my dad was over here, I was like, let's build this bookshelf. Y'all those contractions started getting stronger i said forget the bookshelf yeah we're not doing that right now <laughs> i was on my bouncy ball um my little yoga medicine pregnancy ball and that's like the only thing that was like comfortable for me so i do have a clip of that so i'm going to show you guys that now hello hello <laughs> my dad is here today is March 21st, 2023. And what am I doing? I think I'm in early labor. I'm not sure. Well, actually, I am. Yeah. So I'm on my ball. Mason's due date was. Go ahead, Daddy. 031923. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'm two days past my due date. And I went to the doctor yesterday and they did a membrane sweep, which is when she takes her fingers and goes in a circular, mo circular motion around the cervix. And uh, that's like a natural way to induce labor. So I got that done yesterday. And so ever since yesterday, I had my appointment at like 9.45. All right, so my camera died, but yeah, so, at 9.45, I went to the doctor and she did a membrane sweep around like 10, 10, 15. Came home and had cramps, so I was laying down, but they weren't like bad cramps, it was just like period, like cramps, you know? And then, uh, why are you getting so close? Because I'm a photographer. But this is a video. I'm a vlogger. <laughs> I'm a vlogatographer. Oh my gosh. And... So, where was I? Yeah, I've just been experiencing these contractions for a long time, since last night. It was really hard to sleep last night. Laying in bed is not comfortable because having a contraction in bed is not comfortable. So I had to get this ball out the car and I've been on this ball. I was sitting on the ball. Now I'm just laying on the ball. And I'm using my app here. Can y'all see? app yeah but it's timing the contractions and i had eight contractions in the past hour and they're around seven and a half minutes apart that's right because eight times seven is 56 wow 60 minutes in an hour go. good job here goes another one oh really daddy no because when right. it comes it hurts 
Yes, I shouldn't tell you when it's coming. I used to tell mommy whenever it coming when I had you. I bet. Mm, she told me to shut up. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Okay. Because of the monitor, right? Right. Yeah. So I'm not really supposed to go to the hospital until they're like, well, actually they said three to five minutes, but we're in Atlanta. There's traffic. traffic. NASCAR. Yeah. So we're going to go at like five minutes. But my app keeps telling me to get ready. We probably should call the Uber now. Why would we take an Uber? That's right. When you have me. No. Ralph can drive. Ralph, Ralph is can, here, either. by the way, you guys. He didn't leave me stranded. He's Damn. downstairs working. <laughs> One foot on the gas pedal. Yes. Um, the hospital's 21 minutes away right now. There's oh, no okay. traffic. I know a shortcut. <laughs> You know a shortcut? Yeah, you guys can just follow me. I'll be like the Never lead mind. popo. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, and I know I said that I wasn't getting the epidural, but at this point I might reevaluate that decision because this is, <laughs> this is, um, this is pretty intense. And this is only early labor. You can cough, Daddy. <coughs> this is only early labor. So. <sighs> We're going to see what happens. What time is it? 11.25. Yeah, I can't imagine doing this for another 12 hours. Yeah, my birthday is tomorrow. Uh-oh. Yeah, March 22nd is my birthday. So I feel like Mason is trying to come and, you know... He wants to come to the birthday party. Yeah, he wants to come to the birthday party. <laughs> and have his own birthday. On my birthday. On his birthday. Yeah. So, we'll see. But I will keep you guys updated with what happens, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that clip, I was um, at the house still, clearly. Um, and my contractions started getting closer and closer. I didn't record when I was having contractions. I kind of wish I did, so y'all could see, like how for real they are but y'all those contractions like killed my back it hurt. my back was hurting so bad Whew. so um my contractions started getting closer and closer um around i think like 12 31 o'clock they were like five minutes apart and my dad was like i think you need to call the doctor <laughs> and i don't know like Something was just like making me hesitant to call at first. I was like, should I call? Is this like real? Like, are they really five minutes apart? Is this like really happening? Um, so yeah, so I ended up calling the doctor and they were like, okay, well you need to come in now. We'll be waiting for you, blah, blah. So I was like, okay, cool. And I didn't want to call like too early because I didn't want them to like turn me around at the hospital. Cause I feel like I hear stories when like, you're not close enough, like contracting close enough, they'll be like, go home until you're like however many minutes apart. So thankfully, I was five minutes apart and they told me to go ahead and come on in. So I was in our bathroom getting my toiletries together. So I already had like my hospital bag packed and we had the stroller, I meant the, the car seat and stuff ready. But um, I didn't put my toiletries up yet because I needed my toothbrush and all that on a daily basis. And so I went to go do that and then Ralph came upstairs. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I think you need to pack your stuff because we need to go to the hospital soon. He's like, oh, for real? Okay. So he packs, what, I think he only packs like a laptop and like a jacket or something. I don't know. Um, Cause he was able to like go home and take a shower and stuff if he needed to. So um, he packed his stuff and I was like, okay, we need to go to the hospital. So, we got in the car, my dad followed us, y'all on the way, excuse me, on one second, on the way to the hospital, they were getting stronger, I was in the car holding onto the seatbelt like, <laughs> y'all I looked crazy, okay, so um, we get to the hospital, I'm able to like walk and stuff still, speak correctly, all that get to the hospital and we go in the lobby 
check in I was like yeah we called they told us to come blah blah they're like okay just wait we'll be with you and so time is going by you guys it is going I'm over here having contractions they were two to three minutes apart while I was in the lobby at the hospital I'm trying to figure out what's the hold up like can y'all put me in a room like why am I still here in the lobby so time is going um Ralph or my dad went to go to the car to get my birth ball because that's how I that's where I felt more comfortable like sitting on the ball let me meet my phone sitting on the ball enjoying my little you know exercises whatever and mind you I told you I want to have a natural childbirth too okay remember that so doing my exercises and they just get stronger and stronger and it's starting to get very unbearable so I couldn't even like really sit anymore I was standing and screaming so y'all I was at the hospital in the lobby screaming every contraction every three minutes holding my back I was like ah! like literally screaming and then they called us up to the desk and I had to answer some questions blah blah they're like okay we're still working on getting your room ready and so once I heard it like I thought I was walking up there to the desk so they would you know put me in a room oh it's your t it's time to go to the room blah blah get your stuff no they had to ask me questions and I had to answer them and blah blah and so at that point Ralph is sitting next to me I'm answering the questions and once I realized like I'm not going to the room yet I start crying because I'm I think I started getting anxious like my anxiety because I'm usually like a planner and I like to know what's happening when it's gonna happen blah blah and so the fact that I didn't know when I was gonna be able to go in a room what's happening like I never been pregnant before like what's going on with my body like really freaked me out so I was just sitting there crying bawling crying screaming it was a whole hot mess I wish he would have recorded it but I feel like if he recorded it he would have like I would have probably yelled at him or something so anyway so I got to the hospital at 2 we did not go into the room until 3.30 I was in the lobby for an hour and a half during that time my mom and my mom came my mom was literally in a meeting at work when I told her that I was in labor so my mom was able to make it from the other side of Atlanta to the other side during that time um, I ate some chips whatever I could munch on like it took forever so at 3 30 they were like oh we have your room ready finally they got the wheelchair for me and rolled me to the room so my dad and I just went to, I mean, my mom and I just went to the room first um, and then Ralph and my dad came in like a few minutes later so I finally got to the room the first thing they had me do, had me do was change my clothes and the contractions were still contracting so bad you guys so it took me forever my mom had to help me change because they were just the, the the contractions were so back to back it was really hard to function like it would be cool if they were like 10 minutes apart but they were literally like two minutes apart at that time two three minutes apart so finally changed the nurse was like okay can you lay on the bed i need to see how dilated you are and i'm over here looking at the bed like you want me to lay down and lay and sit still i'm like Ugh these hurt like I have to keep moving so I ended up laying there and in my head I'm like I have to be like seven seven centimeters like six centimeters dilated the way these are going back to back y'all she was like okay well you're almost three centimeters dilated I was like are you kidding me three centimeters like <laughs> I felt like Mason was about to come out any second so she was able to give me something to like calm down um, and relax a little bit so that really worked I couldn't get an epidural until I had a whole IV bag of whatever's in it like I had to finish IV bag IV bag before I got epidural um, and like I said remember I was like 
I want a natural childbirth. But no, those contractions were so bad. I said, forget the natural childbirth. I want the epidural and I want it now, okay? Because this pain ain't no joke. And I feel like it would have went a little better. Like maybe I could have attempted natural if I wasn't like waiting in the lobby for an hour and a half and I had my like calming um, exercises I was that I practiced doing and all that stuff. But I feel like, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know when I was going to get in a room, what was going to happen next. So it kind of made me more anxious. So I wasn't as relaxed like as I wish I would have been. Okay, so I ended up getting my epidural at like maybe like five or six. I have no idea. Like five or six o'clock and it was the best thing ever. So I have a clip of during that time that I vlogged. So I'll show you that now. All right, we're recording. <clears throat> hey, uh, wow, I'm about to be a father in, in a couple hours. But more importantly, Morgan here. She's a trooper. Thank you. I know the last time you saw me, I was at home on a birth ball. And now I'm in the, where am I? At the hospital. You're in the hospital. <laughs> at the hospital shaking to have the shakes. And I knew I was talking all that stuff about having a natural birth. But guess what? I got an epidural. <laughs> and it feels great. It's not in pain anymore. <laughs> Vlogging in here? Yeah. Do you, you want to be in it or do you care? Yeah, I don't and care. This is my Hi. nurse, Alexis. I'm She's Alexis. Great. Nice to meet you guys. Alexis is great. She gave me a warm blanket. Yes. For the shape. Warm ice. All the things. Did you just say warm ice? Yeah, and ice. Oh, I thought you said warm ice. <laughs> I brought you two cups because, you know. Thank you. All I can, special. Thank you. All I can have is ice right now. <laughs> so. See me, I'm eating good. I got some pizza on the way. No. I ordered Chipotle. Well, we ordered Chipotle. I can't eat it. You can go out when gravy goes up. In the delivery room. Hi. It's 8.24. And I am chilling. Chilling. I feel great. I feel great. I feel great. This is her. Can I see? Can you see is the question. No. Can, can I? Can you feel your legs? I'm hungry. Not really. What are you eating? Ice. <laughs> That's some good ice. Some good ice right there. Can you zoom in? Look at that. Tasty ice. Mason, that's all you. Ice. Ice. He's like, what am I eating right now? Ice. 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 Baby. And. Ice. 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 Baby. Right. That's right. Cocktail. So the only thing they would let me have were ice chips, which I was like, so I had like. 10 things of ice chips throughout the whole labor. Um, so fast forward, nine o'clock came. Um, I think they checked again. I was like five centimeters dilated. So I was like, okay, cool. We are progressing, okay. Um, and also my doctor, who I love so much, was not on call that day. So another doctor from the practice was going to be my doctor. So at first it was um, one doctor and they changed shifts at like seven o'clock. So she came in, she was like, hey, you know, talking to me, but then she was telling me she's gonna leave because it's almost seven. Um, and then this other doctor came in, it was this male doctor and I had never seen him before. I was like, who are you? He was like, well, I'm gonna be your doctor for your delivery, blah, blah. He seemed cool at first. Um, so this is like, 11 o'clock he came in and checked me and he was like okay you're like you're eight centimeters dilated we're gonna keep monitoring my contractions were still really close but of course i couldn't feel it because i had the epidural everything was numb 
you know, from the waist down. So that was great. Um, but my contractions were still super close. They were like really, really like a minute apart at that point. Um, but I was like eight centimeters dilated. And he was just like, hey, we're just going to keep monitoring, blah, blah. So then around two or three o'clock comes in the morning, still eating ice. Um, two or three o'clock comes in the morning. And y'all, the epidural ran out. It ran off. Whatever. Ran out, ran off, whatever. There was no epidural. It was slowly declining. And y'all, the contractions, I was starting to feel them again. And I was like, oh my gosh. Mm -mm. I pressed that button. I called the nurse. I said, I need some more epidural. I'm feeling it. It's getting stronger. So I had a whole nother breakdown in the hospital bed. Ralph came up next to me. You know, trying to comfort me and everything. Y'all, I somehow got on my four, all, I got on all fours. I got on my hands and my knees. Because I could kind of like feel my legs at that point and my feet. But I still, you know, like the waist area, my pelvic area, I could start to feel it. But I was able to manage to get on all fours, which really helped me while the patrol ran out. And I was waiting for some more. But I sound like a crazy person again. Um, so the anesthesiologist came in and gave me more of it and I was numb again, thank goodness. And then a little bit later, the doctor came in, back in and was like, um, you're not dilating fast enough, so we're going to give you some more Pitocin. If this doesn't work, we're going to have to do a C-section because your pelvis is not, is he's not going to fit through your pelvis. And I was like, what? And at that moment... I really was in shock because I did not want to hear the word C-section. Um, not anything against people who get C-sections or whatever, but I only wanted a C-section in case it was like, if it was an emergency. And like we, you know, tried everything else and that was the only option. Um, Cause I feel like throughout this pregnancy, I try to, you know, be healthy, work out, um, gain knowledge on certain things about pregnancy and childbirth and you know all that to help me avoid getting a c-section and so when they said that I feel like everything just like shut down I was really upset so my mom she already knew how I was feeling once they said c-section and the doctor left my mom came right up to me I started crying I was like I do not want a c-section and she was like, Morgan, it's okay. We will get through this, you know. This is not, you, you don't know for sure if you're gonna get one. She was just telling me a lot of kind words. Ralph's mom was also in the room with me and she prayed. Uh, we all prayed together, you know, for baby Mason and having a safe, de natural delivery. So after that, I just, you know, try to calm down, went back to sleep. My body is feeling very restless and antsy just because I've been laying down for a very long time and I'm not used to sitting that long. So like my hips were getting tired and I was just ready to push this baby out. So seven o'clock came and it was the next shift. So luckily, um, Dr. Cherry, she's a doctor at the practice that I go to, but she um, was on call during that time. And I have seen her, I seen her once at the doctor's office. And I really liked her. So she came in. I was just so happy that it, there was a familiar face. Like, because the other man, I did not, I never seen him. He wasn't even a doctor at my practice. So it felt, it felt good knowing that I seen Dr. Cherry before. And I had an appointment with her previously. So she came in. She checked to see if I was dilated. She was like, oh, you're about nine and a half centimeters. And I was like, oh my gosh. That's progression. And she was like, I also see his hair. Like she could see my hair, you know, from down there. So I was like, oh my gosh. She's like, you're gonna get ready to push in, push soon. So once she said that, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have vaginal natural birth. Like that made me so happy, you guys. Like, so 
eight o'clock came Ralph was sleeping I forgot if he heard me if he heard the doctor say you're gonna I'm gonna be pushing soon or if I woke him up and said that I'm about to be pushing soon but either way he woke up very quickly and he was like about to be a dad super excited so yeah so um eight o'clock came they were preparing everything and at first I was trying to push on all fours because I was more comfortable that way but it really wasn't working so I did get on my back and I started pushing and I was doing like three pushes like pushing really hard and then stopping and then pushing really hard and stopping pushing really hard stopping and then I took a tiny break and then did it again so I think I pushed them out in like 12 pushes or something or less nine I forgot but it was less than 10 minutes um, and I did have a mirror down there so I could see um, him come out and I feel like that really helped because at first I was like I don't want a mirror probably like maybe go crazy but I feel like the mirror down there really helped me push him out because once I saw his head out I was like oh it's game time like no more breaks I'm pushing like I never pushed before well actually I never pushed like that before anyway but I was like I'm about to push and go all the way so one of the nurses I had there CC she was so hyped she was like a hype woman okay she was hyping me up she's like let's go blah blah Ralph was next to me supporting me and once I saw that head and those shoulders I just kept pushing and baby Mesa came out and y'all I was so happy I was just y'all I started of course I started crying but just seeing Mason come out was like the best thing ever. So proud of you, baby. Yes. You have a Morgan. That was really good pushing. Well done, baby. <laughs> Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have 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 you know scoping the scene out so he came out they put him on my chest and it was just like such a surreal moment like I just birthed this baby this precious little boy and so I was just so happy it was very tiring I will say pushing um but it was not bad like pushing him out did not hurt it was just pressure pressure that you just want to get out that's all the contractions are what hurt the most okay but pushing was was like the easy part okay so I have a clip of Mason um right after and right right when he was getting washed and everything and y'all my baby had a little cone head it was the cutest thing I don't know if it's because he was in my pelvis I remember I was stuck at eight centimeters for like a really long time so I don't know if he was like in the pelvis for a long time just stuck there and it made his head so coney I, I kept calling him coney at first too but um it made his head so coney but you know babies their heads are really soft in the beginning and so they're easily molded and that's what helps them like you know get through um so I was just like is his head gonna go to normal and they were like yes of course it is so I mean now his head is normal but y'all when he was born it was very very coney okay Oh, so I'm going to show you that clip now. What you crying for, Mason? You're in the best. <laughs> oh, look at your fat face. <laughs> oh, look at that face. You mad? They messing with you? Say yes. Say, I just, I just want to take a nap. Oh, you don't want to get your hair washed today? Look at Grandma. Oh, yeah. 
It feel good, don't it? Yeah. I know. Uh -huh. Nika. Doesn't it feel good? Mm -hmm. You are so gorgeous. I'm excited and I'm really proud. We'll take you wherever you want to go next. Okay? I hope you baby boy. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. All right, you want to go see your daddy? Daddy's patiently waiting. Ralph's about to hold him. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you want, just kind of, you can let him like relax right here in your arms. Aww. Yeah. It's not really there you go. Yeah. Perfect. You look like a natural. Look at you. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Over now. Oh. All right. <laughs> oh. 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 He's so precious. I know. He's tiny with his dick. You know what I'm saying? He's, He's long. Crazy. He's going to be tall. Yes, but we want that. Yeah, because I'm short. Yeah, my legs, Ralph's Ralph brain, my athleticism. Right. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be athletic. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. Oh, my God. You got Thank you, CC. Oh, man. Thank you, CC. Thank you. Let me go get you some socks. Sit down. Yeah, there's still there. Well, I'll call you later. Next to the green bag, inside that little hug. Nigeria. I'm going to hold it up to get you. Yeah. All right, bye. Sleeping tight. Mm -hmm. He's content with his daddy. Okay, so that was my precious baby boy, Mason. So after I delivered him, um, I was in that room for a couple hours and then they tr switched me to like the, I don't know what they call that room, but the room that you stay in for the next couple days. So I did stay at the hospital for two days. So I had Mason on my birthday, March 22nd. Um, I was checked in the hospital on Tuesday, had on March 22nd, since everything was normal and um all good they only had me there for two days so i was able to go home on friday hey, you guys so <clears throat> baby mason is sleeping it's right here and we're about to get discharged i know the last time you guys saw me i was still in labor that's a whole story i have to tell you guys so i haven't been vlogging much i've been just trying to rest and make sure mason's okay because <clears throat> this is a lot of work okay um, I feel so congested after I had him too, but <clears throat> it's a lot of hard work and let me get some water. Um, I'm so exhausted. I'm so exhausted. But we're packing our stuff up to get discharged. Um, y'all know my birthday was the 22nd and I had him on my birthday which is crazy. So my dad got Mason and I balloons. So we got this birthday cupcake. And then down here, they died, but he got two blue for Mason and two pink for me because we're 22 twins. So Mason and I share the same birthday. He was born at 8.29 a.m. on March 22nd. And I was born at 4.43 a.m. on March 22nd. So I'm like, that is so crazy. We have the same birthday. But, um, yeah, so we're about to go soon. Um, I only had to stay in the hospital for two days, so today's Friday. And it's almost 11 a.m., so we're about to leave. This is, my baby bump is going down. So, that's what we're looking like so far. Here's baby Mason. Hi, honey. Waking up. He has so much hair, you guys. So yeah, he's about to wake up. Ralph, oh, see? Ralph went to the car to put some things up. Um, and then we'll get the rest of the stuff. And we have to go over like discharge papers and all that. But he's so adorable. I love him. 
So I'm about to feed him because it is time for him to be fed. I am breastfeeding um, after I gave birth to him. During that golden hour, he latched on and started drinking. So that's a good thing. I'm so happy about that. Um, but I'm about to go ahead and feed him. I'll probably give you my childbirth experience sometime, you know, in a couple days at home. But, yeah. This is the room that I recovered in. It's way smaller than the other room. But yeah, baby Mason. So we'll see you in a little bit. Um, one of the first things I ordered after giving birth was sushi. I was like, I want sushi. Like, cause I could not eat raw sushi the whole pregnancy. So I was like, yo, I want sushi. I want a sub from Publix. Like, so I got all that stuff. Um, so yeah, so y'all, I loved actually the hospital. Um, <laughs> now being at home and like full on mom mode, the hospital was like a resort. Like <laughs> the nurses were on call all the time. They came and took him. So you got a little break. Like I got food, like I was able to eat, like all that. So the hospital was very nice, um, you know, and pleasant. So overall, my experience was pretty good, you guys. Um, it was just that um, delivery. I mean, not delivery. It was the labor and the fact that they did not have a room ready for me. I was like, and the contractions were real. So, but we birthed a healthy boy mason he was seven pounds 13 ounces and 21 inches long um born on my birthday on march 22nd and now he is three weeks old um and i love him so much he's like the cutest ever he makes all these funny faces um it's just hilarious and i love him so yeah you guys so that was my labor and delivery story um, Mason is currently sleeping right now, <laughs> which I wish he would sleep through the night. Okay. That's a whole nother story, but, um, he's sleeping right now. Um, if he wakes up, I'll try to like put him on here real quick. Say hello world. He's getting a little hungry. You say hello world. Mm -hmm. We love you. Mm -hmm. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Y'all, he literally just woke up, but he's the cutest. I love him so much. <laughs> My family and I are just happy that Mason came out happy, healthy. He's like so cute um, and everything just went really well. And we have God to thank for that. Um, and this has definitely been an amazing experience being a mother so far so I'm super excited to watch him grow and just be his mom you know I'm a mother so yeah so I will see you guys next time and thank you guys for watching bye